And as migrant crossings trend up heading into the fall, Fox News has obtained dramatic footage from the Texas Department of Public Safety showing agents involved in a high-speed chase of a group of human smugglers before detaining them on foot. Joining us now is the Texas DPS spokesman, Lieutenant Chris Olivares. Uh, Lieutenant, uh, we should point out the DPS provided us with this footage, a very dangerous high-speed chase that at one point goes through a, a small rural neighborhood, ends up with the uh, two occupants of the vehicle, one of whom appears to be a child there in the orange uh, T-shirt, uh, running through the brush and jumps into a swamp. Uh, how much more of this are you seeing? Because it seems to happen almost every day. And what's the danger to the public posed by this? Well, good afternoon, John. Thanks for having me on. So this is a daily occurrence that we face every single day on the border, not just us as DPS, but also local, county, and federal law enforcement having to deal with these human smugglers that are smuggling illegal immigrants further into the interior. And with that, the dangers are the fact that you have these high-speed chases where these smugglers have no regard for the safety of the motoring public. You see in that video where they'll, they'll drive on the wrong side of the road, they'll crash into other cars, they'll crash into ranch fences, which then impacts the ranchers. So they have no regard for the public safety at all. That's why it makes it more dangerous when these human smugglers are involved in some type of smuggling event and also poses dangers to the people they are smuggling. When we had cases before where some of these illegal immigrants die because of these human smugglers because they crash or other, other means, you know, as far as we saw last year in San Antonio, where migrants died in the back of a tractor trailer because they were being smuggled. So those are the dangers. And when you have open borders, you expose and you also allow criminal organizations to expand their criminal enterprise throughout the United States where they can recruit drivers, even teenage drivers that are taking, you know, taking part in human smuggling. So it's nonstop. We see it every single day. And it becomes more dangerous as, mm. these, as we encounter these individuals, these smugglers. Yeah, as you point out, we saw uh, you folks chasing down that pickup truck, which was uh, not only off the road, but on the wrong side of the road, and then off the road on the wrong side of the road. So that's obviously dangerous. Chris, I want to come back to something that we mentioned at the top of the program. And this is charges from Democrats, specifically the Democratic Hispanic Caucus. The Texas DPS is separating uh, migrant families when they come across the border, specifically separating males from women and children. Here's what they, uh, part of what they wrote in a letter to Merrick Garland and Alejandro Mayorkas. They write, quote, after the fathers are incarcerated in state or local facilities, they are then transferred to Immigration and Customs Enforcement custody with no reference to the families they have been separated from and placed in expedited removal. With little or no communication, father, mothers and children are traumatized and left wondering what happened to their loved ones. Um, are, are you, in fact, uh, engaging in these separations as Democrats charge? Absolutely not, John. And of course, we, we put a statement out on that and we explained. That's why I also wanted to explain in detail exactly what we deal with and what we encounter when we see these groups of illegal immigrants coming across the river. Now, one thing to keep in mind also is that when we encounter these groups that present themselves as families. And the reason why I say that is because there's no way to determine if they're actual family members because they mm -hmm. don't have documentation. They don't have birth certificates. We don't do DNA testing at the state level. So we have no way to determine if they're actual family members. We now we take their word for it as they come across and we talk to the children as well. And if we see any type of suspicious behavior or we feel the child is in danger, we can then further investigate and we will not allow that child to move on with that group. But the, the encounter that we have with these family groups is very short, and very brief. Once we encounter them, we turn them over to Border Patrol. Now, as it pertains to male adults that are with these groups, we do arrest them for state charges, just like anything mm. else, just like we do in our normal functions as a state trooper. If we arrest a driver that has a child, uh, in a vehicle for drunk driving, there is a form of separation there if you arrest a father or mother. Same thing with a family disturbance. You go to a domestic call and the husband and wife are fighting, you arrest one of them, there is some form of family separation. But to say that we're actively involved in separating families is completely false. And if you really want to look at family separation, look at over the 300,000 accompanied children that have come across the border right now, and over 85,000 right now they are not accounted for, that is a severe form of family separation because these children don't have families. They're not with their families right now. And what we're trying to do is trying to stop the flow of mass migration between the ports of entry. And there has been some cases, too, John, that adults, male adults that are with these groups, they will force children through the concertina wire so they can injure themselves. And we have filed charges on them. We have arrested these male adults 
for endangering the child. Our best interest is to look out for the children and to make sure that child does go with some type of family member if we can determine that once we encounter them. We should also point out that Texas DPS has affected the rescues of more than 900 children who are suspected be, to be involved in child trafficking rings. Uh, there's one Absolutely. other issue. There's one other issue too, Chris, that's, that's cropping up, and that's the the border barrier that's down the middle of the Rio Grande in in one section. Uh, the Biden administration is taking it to court over this, saying it's illegal. Now the federal government is saying, "Well, wait a minute. This thing's actually on the Mexico side of the border that runs down the middle of the Rio Grande." What do you say? Well, I know that's one thing that we're looking at right now, John, the governor's office as well. And if that's the case, I mean, we can that, that barrier can easily be moved. I've said that before. It's a barrier that can actually be moved or actually be extended. That's one thing that mm -hmm. we're looking at right now. But the fact of the matter is, John, that it's there for a reason. It's stemming the flow of mass migration. And ever since it's been placed there, there has not been a single illegal crossing directly in front of that barrier. That has not been a single drowning around that barrier as well. The drownings that are taking place and the force, the fact that we're seeing illegal crossings is taking place further away from the barrier. So the barrier is doing its job. It's actually stopping the flow of mass migration between the ports of entry. All right. Well, we'll uh, check on whether it's on the Mexico side or the U.S. side or right down the center in the future and see what you do with that. Lieutenant uh, Chris Oliveira, it's good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.